So why would the fish die? There are a few reasons. Uh, let's uh, review the most common ones. So the first thing they need, the fish need is O2, also known as oxygen. There is not enough oxygen into the water, the fish will not survive. There are different species of fish and all species have their own requirements and it can vary dramatically. For instance, here, trout, they need a high concentration of oxygen. Now, if you take tilapia, or even carp, need a low concentration of oxygen. If the concentration of oxygen is high, the fish will be fine, but they will survive in low concentration. If you have goldfish, they can also survive in, in a pretty low concentration of oxygen. So just to give you some numbers, trout, we say that they are comfortable in seven milligrams of oxygen per liter. Trout, uh, sorry, carp and tilapia, they can probably live in five, but they will survive. Carp will survive in two milligrams. It doesn't, it's better if it doesn't last too long, right? What I'm saying is that they can survive to very low concentration of oxygen. And it's not because they survive that they, they will live comfortably and uh, they will give the best performance. It's always better to have a high concentration of oxygen for your fish. There are some limits as well. You don't want to go too high, especially if you are using pure oxygen, but I don't think in aquaponics any, anyone is using pure oxygen. It's not something very sustainable. So why am I talking about oxygen here? It's because um, if you have a system that is not adapted, if it's not well designed, you may not have enough oxygen. And if you don't use any air pump, you may not have enough oxygen for your fish. So during the day, there are some algae that create some oxygen in the pond, photosynthesis. And therefore you are thinking, oh, that's fine. There is enough, uh, the fish are looking good, but during the night, the plants are not producing oxygen and the fish are consuming. So everything is going down. And the oxygen concentration in the morning can be very low. So in summer, when the water temperature is higher, there is less oxygen available into the water, you may have problems early morning. So that's when, that's something you should check. Another reason why I put oxygen on the board is because the most common way to kill fish, and it happened to me also, is uh, if you have a power outage. If you power shut down and you don't have uh, any oxygenation in the pond anymore, if you have a lot of fish, of course, the oxygen concentration will decrease because all the fish are consuming and there is no much production, no much aeration. Therefore, after a while, the fish will die. So oxygen is a paramount parameter. Um, so regarding the power outage, you can use some backup systems. I personally installed an alarm now. So if anything happens, there is a big alarm. So because it happened during the night before. So this time there is nothing that is gonna, there is no possibility for the, the air pump to stop and the power to stop without me knowing. And uh, this alarm already saved the fish once. Um, and I, I'm also installing a, a backup a 12 volt air pump on the system. So that's something to take in consideration. If you have a big pond, if you have a certain quantity of fish, maybe you want to invest in those type of equipment to avoid the big problems. So oxygen is one, then what else? Well, basically we are talking about the water parameters here. And in terms of water parameters, we got a few that are toxic. So ammonia, ammonium, it's a couple, NH3, NH4. Uh, we got nitrite or nitrite, sorry, let me pronounce it correctly. Nitrite, and we got
nitrate. So those three parameters, they come from basically uh, the west of the fish. West of the fish is, is basically transformed is am in ammonia. Transform, when I say basically, it breaks down in ammonia. Then you got some bacteria that are going to transform the ammonia into nitrite. And then other bacteria are transforming the nitrite into nitrate. You need to have those bacteria in your aquaponic system to be able to do the transition. You need to have enough bacteria to do the transition, right? So if you have a lot of fish food and just a little bit of bacteria, they are not going to be able to transform everything. And you're going to have a peak either in ammonia or in nitrite. Those two elements here are extremely toxic for the fish. You don't want them to raise. As soon as ammonia appears in the tank, you want it to be transformed in nitrite and then transform in nitrate. Because nitrates are a bit less toxic, but they are still they are still stressing the fish, right? So you don't want to have too much nitrate. The beauty is, of course, the nitrates are consumed by the plants. The plants are growing from the nitrates plus other elements, right? So if you, are, if you are losing fish, it's maybe because you don't have a system that is well designed and it doesn't allow the ammonia to be transformed in nitrite or it doesn't allow the nitrite to be transformed in nitrate. So all those elements, those two elements, they, they may be causes. They may cause your fish to die. They may kill your fish. They may affect the, the health of your fish. Now, Something that is uh, clear is that I'm not going to explain you in one video how to make sure you have enough a good system for ammonia and nitrite. I recommend you to watch all my videos or to follow my training. Uh, but the, the, the reality is that to, ha to disappear, to have the ammonia and nitrite to disappear, you get, need a good design. You need a good ratio between the volume of grow bed and the quantity of fish. And basically, you need a good habitat for the bacteria. The bacteria that are working here, nitrosomonas, and here, nitrobacter. Two different types of bacteria. Those two bacteria, if you don't have them in the good conditions, in the good quantity, your system is not going to work, and this is going to increase, or this is going to increase, and this is definitely going to kill your fish. So if you don't understand pop aquaponics properly and if you design an aquaponics system without the good knowledge, this is probably where you will lose your fish. Now, another parameter that is very important and um, well understood as well is the pH. So why do we talk about pH here? It will act on the, the different fins, but it will act on the fish as well. The fish, if the pH is too low or too high, it's going to affect them. But the pH is also going to affect the activity of the bacteria. So if the pH is too low, the bacteria are not going to work properly. If the pH is too high, it's going to affect the ammonia because, um, as, as I explained before, ammonia is not just ammonia, it's ammonia and ammonium. It's a couple, NH3, NH4+. Plus. Let's write it down. NH3. NH4 plus. Basically, this is a couple and the balance may be different. It's never, you don't have the equilibrium between NH3 and NH4 plus. Depending on the pH, it can go more NH4 plus or more NH3. One is more toxic than another. So at high pH, at high pH, the couple ammonia ammonium becomes way more toxic for the fish. So you need to take this in consideration as well. So pH can affect your fish. Also variation in the pH. If you got a pH that is going up and down, if you don't regulate it properly, the variation has the worst for the fish. It can really affect the fish. So if you move the pH very slowly, the fish will probably um, survive at a wide range. But if you have a quick quick move in pH is not good. That's why when we receive fish in a pond, we acclimate them. When I say we acclimate, we, we don't throw them in the pond. We, we make sure the temperature of the buckets where the, fish, the new fish are and the pond are the same. 
we leave enough time and then we mix the water very slowly because the pH may be different and you don't want to have a, var a quick variation of pH, otherwise it may kill your fish. Now, another one that is uh, uh, important as well is called the disease. Disease, you got different types of disease. Let's list three of them. You got the fungus. Bacteria. You got virus. But actually when I say fungus, it's part of another category. Fungus, some crustacean. Nematode. When I say nematodes, I'm talking about type of worms. Mollusk, etc. And all this, as you understand, is parasites. So how do we avoid those three elements? Well, you know, once your fish are affected, even in aquaculture, there are some ways to try to reduce the quantity of parasites, to kill the, the parasite, some way to decrease the quantity of bacteria attack, and virus, it's, it's more tricky. Uh, basically, what, what happens is that bacteria are more present in higher temperature, and virus in lower temperature. That's just a general concept. If in aquaponics you wait to have disease and then try to find the good, the good medicine to treat the disease, you will be in trouble and your aquaponics system is never going to work. Because when I was working in aquaculture, I was throwing, every week I was throwing uh, dozens of liters of uh, chemicals into the water to kill the parasites and to minimize bacteria as well, but mainly to kill the parasite. I was also using vaccines and it was a lot of work, but also a lot of um, chemicals and pesticides released into the water. And that's not what you want, because if we have pesticides here, you understand that it's going to act on the bacteria in our ecosystem. If you kill the bacteria, you kill this transformation here. So basically you're going to have a uh, lot of ammonia in your water, your water, your ammonia will increase and the fish will die. So if you see parasites, don't think, okay, I'm going to buy something from the shop that you find in an aquarium shop or from anywhere, basically. Don't try to put any pesticide into your water, otherwise you will have this problem and you will lose your fish. So for me, the best way to deal with this, with basically with disease, This is happen for one simple reason, is because we stress the fish. So I will try to write this here, yes. Why do we stress the fish? We stress the fish because we are greedy very often. Stress the fish because we put too, too many of them, or because they are not adapted to the, the environment we, we give them. So one thing that it is very important is to make sure you respect the good temperature for your fish. I shouldn't have to write this down, but I see the mistake so often. I mean, it makes so much sense. If you don't have the good temperature, your fish will die, right? But also, before they die, they will stress. While they stress, the fish are not in good conditions and therefore they're going to be weak and they're going to be open for a lot of disease, parasite, bacteria, virus. Look at a 25 year old man or women, they are not very often sick, right? But if you put them in poor conditions, if you stress them or when they get old, then they get, they get disease because they are, they are more affected. Their immune system is not at the best. Same thing for the fish. They are stressed. They will be subject to disease. If they are not stressed, you have very low chances to see disease. So the idea in aquaponics is really to keep them in, in good conditions. So good conditions mean, again, good water parameters, also uh, low density. So low density, I mean, very few fish compared to what you would grow in common aquaculture for the same volume of water. So maintain your water clean and uh, 
keep a few fish in the in the system compared to what you would grow in aquaculture. That said, a few fish can be well enough for you to to feed your family. Here I got uh, around 60 trout, uh, so I got probably 30 kilo of fish. I will do an average weight very soon, um, and I wouldn't recommend to go over this in this type of system, but you have to understand that's already a lot of food. And uh, now uh, we are at the end of winter, so we're gonna have the grow beds that are gonna start to produce significantly. We're gonna have a lot of water crates growing here. So all this system will produce a lot of food without having to put the, system, the fish in poor conditions and stress them. The idea for me is to offer them a very nice ecosystem place where they can live properly and um, yeah take care of them you know I want them to be happy to live where they are if they are happy I'm happy I don't need to produce 200 kilos uh, 30 kilos is way enough so that's what I recommend and uh, if you follow this you will not kill your fish uh, I may have missed something so feel free in the comments to add what other uh, thing can kill your fish of course there are a lot of other parameters that I don't, I don't put here, but I'm talking about the most common. Um, predators are one as well, but I don't think it's significant in aquaponics. Very often we keep the aquaponics system close to our house, uh, but you never know, you can have birds or things like this. So of course, there are things to, ha to add, but already if you, if you take care of this, to take care of this, it means you have a good design in your aquaponics system. It means you understand how aquaponics works. It means everything is, um, is well um, designed. You have good ratio between the volume of crow beds, the volume of uh, fish tank, the quantity of fish, quantity of bacteria. If you follow good recommendation and have a good design, all this is going to be fulfilled and you will not lose your fish. Uh, if, you are, if you haven't started aquaponics and if you want to know more about this, I recommend you to join uh, the aquaponics revolution movement. There is a link into the description of this video. And there you will have access uh, to a lot of uh, very important information to understand how to design an aquaponics system properly. And um, you will get also some information about what I am doing here, the, the different tips I can give you, the recommendations and the experiments I am running here. So I hope to see you uh, on the other side in the community. If not, I see you in the next video.